Hi, I'm Steve. Welcome to my shop. In this video, I'm going to cover compound miter joinery. And I'm going to attempt to explain the geometry behind this and how you set angles for both your miter fence and your blade tilt to make these cuts. Now, there are ways to do it with just setting the miter, but I don't find those particularly safe, at least for the operations that I do, because it involves tilting your workpiece. So you either need an auxiliary fence, or if you're using a compound miter saw, some type of crown stop to do it. And uh, with the short pieces that I intend on using, which are generally for smaller boxes, that's not going to work. For a tray this size, it'd work just fine. To give a kind of scale for, for the box sizes that I like, are roughly 6 inches across, 150 millimeters. And if I can open this... Sometimes it's, it's gotten real humid lately, so it's gotten a little tighter. But I use the Hoffman dovetail system, dovetail keys, for uh, construct my box sides. And nominally I like 8 millimeters or 5 16th inch uh, wall thickness. But clearly the length of these sides you're not going to be able to safely do or easily do on a compound miter saw. So let's just get to a little bit of the theory as we enter the twilight zone. Okay, lesson one is from Calculus and Analytic Geometry, Thomas, fourth edition. I had to knock a lot of cobwebs out, but we're in the chapter dealing with vectors and parametric equations. And let's uh, roll over. Let's see if I can find that page here. Here we go. Scalar product of two vectors. Now, uh, I'm just kidding. Let's head over in something that makes more sense to probably a lot more people. However, you can use the methodology in this uh, uh, analytic geometry and calculus book to figure out what those angles are. And trust me, I see no need to reinvent the wheel because there's plenty of people that have already done that. So let's just look at how... Uh, or what the geometry actually is and how you figure out the angles uh, for your fence and blade tilt. Okay, the easiest way to describe setting the angles on, on a compound miter is to start with a compound miter cut. And this is one of my sample pieces for a 10 degree splayed um, angle that's 10 degrees off the vertical. And if you cut this uh, flat like I prefer. I find it more accurate and easier to control and clamp than cutting it by tilting the piece and using a compound miter saw. It works great for large pieces, not so great for short, uh, short pieces. But anyway, let's look at the. This is the cut face. This is the face that's uh, laid down. So I need to tilt the blade and I need to miter the fence. So there's two angles we need to set. The first angle will be, we'll talk about the miter angle of the fence. And to do that, the easiest way to describe that is to take a square and go at this point down here and go draw a line from that point across. Now I've already marked that and I've also highlighted the edge of the miter with a pencil so you can better see that what that angle is. And that angle that we need to tilt the fence to is actually that angle. So that's the first thing is to set the fence angle and that will be uh, that's a fairly easy trigonometric uh, function you just have to account for the amount of tilt that you have in order to figure that angle. And as a clue it's for a 10 degree splay out this angle is not 10 degrees. So, and for a 45 degree, to get a 45 degree on the flat, once you tilt that piece or consider that it's tilted, the angle of this uh, cut is not 45 degrees either. Even though the you will ultimately end up with a 45 degree uh, flat corner. The easiest way to describe this or to visualize this is I've drawn a point here right at that edge and if you go to the uh, scalar or dot product 
analysis for vectors on planes. That's really what you need to do. But to visualize what, what you do if you calculate that, and I don't suggest doing that. There's other methods that you can use. But I've got two drill blanks here, and I'm going to put them right at the same origin. This drill blank is normal or perpendicular to this face, and this drill blank is normal or perpendicular to the cut face. And the angle between those is the uh, blade tilt that you'll need to make. The problem is, is that because this thing is tilted around, they're not at, they're not in the same axis there. It's kind of rotated because of the the 10 degree tilt. You, you the problem is to figure out the angle between these two drill rods. And in order to do that, let's just head to the computer in the house, and I will. I've got a CAD model shown up, and I'm also going to show you my favorite. Uh, calculation sheet for that I use in my shop all the time because I don't have CAD in my shop it's in the it's in the home computer okay I've created a drawing of the the box that I'm considering here the the lengths and the heights it doesn't really matter what I'm concerned about is the angles I need to set for my uh, table saw or miter saw, whatever it is you're using. And what I, let me look at the top view here. And you'll notice that obviously it's got four sides and all of these uh, faces in that horizontal plane are at right angles. There are 90 degree angles there. So if I come down here and look at the bottom and uh, you'll see that I've got an outward splay. And on the sides, I also have it on the front and back as well. Same 10 degrees. I, I splayed this out 10 degrees. So I've established a section view of this. And let me turn on that section view. Cutting across uh, that view. And let me zoom in here. And let's measure some angles. measure that angle and this let's say I, I want to go from this bottom edge to that edge there and that should show the splay out or I could do that one and that one. let's do this one and I need to change this to an angular dimension and select that edge select that edge and you'll see that it is splayed out from the horizontal 100 degrees so from the vertical it's splayed out 100 degrees minus 90, which is 10 degrees. So let me go ahead and close that. And turn that view off. And head back to here. Now the next thing I want to do, let's, let's go figure out the angles we need to set. And so I've established a cut plane through across one of these uh, miter uh, corners. And let me turn that on and let's uh, look here. Let's zoom in on this. So the first thing I want to look at is the miter. Uh, what is my miter or my fence setting need to be? So I'm going to select this face, which would be the right face here. And what I want to do, remember the line I drew in the shop was right from this point across here. I want to figure out what that angle is. In order to do that, I'm going to do a measurement. And that angular measurement from this edge to this edge. And that angle is 99.85 degrees less 90 uh, for my fence adjustment. So that would be 9.85 degrees. The next angle I want to consider, let me delete these and go back here. Let's see, zoom in. And remember the from the normal vectors or the, the drill rods, normal or perpendicular to this face, 
and to the cut face, I need to know the angle between those two faces. That will tell me my tilt angle. So from between this face and this face, so the total angle is 134.14 degrees. The total angle is 90 less that for my, for my uh, blade reference. So it would be 44.14 degrees. So let's head over to Matthias Wendell's uh, uh, spreadsheet. And let's see what his says. For a four-sided box, 10 degrees off from outward tilt from the vertical, my miter angle is 9.85 degrees and my tilt angle is 44.14 degrees, which are the same values that my CAD program showed. So those are two ways you can use to do that. I, there's also other online calculators, which are just as easy to use, uh, but I like this, have this sheet, you know, on a clipboard next to my saw so that I can quickly reference it without having to go online so, with some calculator. So let's head back out to the shop and make some adjustments and cuts because the proof of the pudding is how well does this work in reality? Okay, so making accurate cuts is a matter of how accurately you set your machine up. And regardless of whether you have a sliding table saw like this, uh, a regular cabinet saw, a compound miter saw, it, it's how accurate you can set it up. So some digital aids like this, such as this Wixie um, angle gauge or and a digital uh, protractor or something like that. It doesn't have to be digital. I actually have a Matoyo which is analog and I actually prefer it over, the, over this for making settings. I'll use this for verification as opposed to actually making the settings because the locking mechanism on this El Cheapo off-brand thing I'm not even sure what it is. Oh, take tools. Uh, it's, it's just not a very good locking mechanism it seems to make accurate measurements but just don't expect it to hold its position and it's always turning off at an inopportune moment but anyway uh, I'll set those aside if you need to use something like that for your saw that's fine so for a 10 degree um, splay angle uh, on a four sided box I need to set my blade angled or tilted at 44.14 degrees and the resolution on my saw is the nearest tenth of a degree so I, it's actually set at 44.14 uh, degree now it lets me enter 44.14 but it won't go there because the resolution is the nearest tenth so I've got this um, this is Martin's version of a, of a uh, miter attachment to the sliding table. This They call this the Miter X. I know Felder makes one. They call theirs a different name. And I, I'm pretty sure Altendorf makes one too uh, for their saws. I do not know whether anybody else makes anything. Those are the only three that I've ever seen or heard of. But you could use a probably a similar type device on your, uh, on your uh, cabinet saw if you've got su uh, such a thing. So the thing I need to do with the, with the miter angle, I need to set this for 10 degree splay at 9.85 degrees. And again, that's accuracy, it's where it's at. Get it as closely as you can set it, the, the better joints you'll have. So on this one, I'm gonna set this to uh, 9.85. out of the way and the scale on this has markings to every quarter degree and for uh, 9.85 that's reasonably close to 9.75 so I'm going to come up here to 9.75 but I'm going to go just a little further I've got a cursor here and I'll just keep it to that side of the line and hopefully that will get me 
get me closer to where I need. So now that I've got my, my sides pre-cut with the bottom beveled and the groove put in, I need to concern myself with where the long point actually is. And I want the long point to be on the top, which is this edge, which means that I need to position the piece. And if I do that, that's short, all right? That way. And I need to hang this far enough out. And since my blade tilts that way, the groove will need to be on the bottom. And I'll just cut off enough to where I can um, put, this, put this down. And now I'm just going to clamp this in position to see if I can get the best cut that I can. Make sure that I'm secure. And I'll open up my blast gate. Now I'm not going to be able to, well, I'm going to, be able to keep that guard reasonably down. I just don't have the miter hood on, so I won't put that all the way down. And I should be good to go. So I've got my first compound miter cut. So now I want to make the opposing cut. I'll make that on the uh, opposite side, but I need I can't do it uh, this way because my angles will be wrong. So I need to pivot my fence around and make the cut on the opposite side. So I'm going to loosen that, that, and I need to do. Uh, the same angle setting on the opposite side. So that's 9.85 degrees off of 90. So that's 9.75. And let's put that cursor about where it should be. And let's see my and this one I gotta have the bottom. Let's see if I get this right here. Better get it right or the groove won't match up. Yep, this will be the long point. And I'm going to make the opposite side cut. Got my opposite sides cut, and uh, let me. Uh, I'm going to actually take this over to the uh, the compound miter saw and cut that. Uh, I won't cut it in half. I'll cut the ends off. So I got some other test pieces if I need to adjust it. Okay, so after I've uh, cut the uh, 
dovetail slots and uh, the dovetail slots are not the subject of this video it's really the geometry of the compound miter how you join them is up to you uh, whatever works best for you and what you've got available I have a feeling that most of my viewers don't have Hoffman dovetail machines so this uh, uh, it really wasn't really necessary for me to show that if there's a lot of interest in how I did this uh, on a machine that wasn't designed to do compound uh, joints uh, post them in the comments and if there's enough interest I'll make a video on it but the first thing is let's let's check and see how it is this corner should be square so I've got this digital miter gauge or angle gauge and let's see if I've I've got that zeroed here so let's see the angle let make that less than 90 and this should be 90 degrees when I splay that out and get right to the corner and voila let's see here I don't know I'm I'm gonna call that good that's 90 degrees zoom in on that Let's pull that back out, push that in. Didn't get any better than that. I'm going to call that good. So anyway, that's my explanation or attempt at an explanation of, of setting angles for making compound miter joints. I hope this has been helpful to you. If you've got any questions or comments, post them below. And if you are interested in seeing a video on making these dovetail slots on a machine that wasn't designed for uh, compound joinery, uh, let me know and I will, uh, if there's enough interest, I'll make a video on that. But in any event, uh, have a great day and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.